already we've already done that. Um, we do say that if you have headphones, it is um, best to use those during the webinar. We just find that it, it allows you to hear a little bit better. Um, but thank you very much for joining our Discover the South webinar. And today we are joined by destination experts that you all have already seen um, from experts across three states, which is a first in our webinar series. So I'm really excited. Um, let me just click here. Um, some of you will already be familiar with Heather Egan from our Grapevine webinar, uh, which you can watch on our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Heather is the Director of Leisure and in International Sales for the Grapevine Convention and Visitors Bureau. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. And next up, we have Todd Stallbomber. Todd is the Travel Development Manager at Oklahoma Tourism. And some of you may have met Todd in February this year when he was down for the Visit USA events in Australia. And it's great to have, this, have you with us also today, Todd. Good morning. Thank you. Good to see you all. Yes. And finally, we have Maria. Maria Manzella is the Director of Tourism from the New Orleans and company, New Orleans, sorry. And today, Heather will be chatting to us about all things Louisiana. Uh, she'll also talk to us about the cities of Shreveport and Alexandria today too. Good morning, Maria. Hello, and yes, you can say New Orleans and you can say New Orleans. It's acceptable both ways. And and as a local, how do you how do you pronounce it? New Orleans. New Orleans, perfect. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll give that a go today. Yeah. And my name is Bailey and I'm your in-market rep here in Australia and New Zealand for Grapevine, Texas. And I'm sure by now you will have hopefully have heard about our Sell Your Way um, incentive program with American Airlines. And if you've already registered as part of the incentive program, you'll earn an extra point today. And if you haven't already registered, you can do so. Uh, all you need to do is drop me an email and let me know that you'd like to participate and I'll send you all of the information back. Now, the reason that we've brought these three states together today is because they form one of the one of the five FAM itineraries. Grapevine is uniquely positioned just five minutes away from Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, making it a fantastic gateway and starting point for your clients who are visiting the South. And if you're lucky enough to be one of the Sell Your Way FAM winners, you could experience Texas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana for yourself on what we like to call the Cowboys, Indians, and all that jazz itinerary, which you'll hear all about from our presenters today. And if we move, as we move through the webinar today, uh, if you have any questions, please type these in the box below, and we'll either answer these as we go along where possible, or at the end of the session, we can have a little bit of a Q&A. And also, I'm available on email if you do need any any information or any help. Um, before we start today, I just want to get a gauge on how many of you have experienced these states firsthand. So if you can go ahead and um, just answer yes or no. Have you visited Texas? Have you visited Oklahoma? And have you visited Louisiana? So this just gives us a little bit of a point of reference to understand the, the destination knowledge and the destination experience for each of these states. Cool. So it's great to see that a few of you, quite a few of you actually, have seen a bit of the South. Um, it's going to be interesting for me to know who, can anybody let me know if um, they've experienced all three? Um, you'll be able to do that by typing in the comment box just or giving me a little wave. Um, I would love to know if anybody's had the opportunity to, to see all three of these, the states that we're talking about today. Perfect. So I think most people have answered now, which is great. And I'm going to end that voting now. So Heather is going to kick off today's webinar, but first I'm going to play you a video that offers you a little glimpse into Texas. Let me pull that up.
Sorry, I was having a, a little technical issues there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're really excited to be back with you all today and excited about our partnership with Oklahoma and Louisiana as we kick off a new itinerary that we have created that we call Cowboys, Indians, and All That Jazz. And as you saw from that video, when you think of Cowboys, I'm sure you think of Texas. So we're excited to start this tour in Grapevine, Texas. Grapevine is home to Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, which has over 60 nonstop uh, the international destinations, including Sydney and soon to be Auckland. So it's very easy to get to Grapevine. Once you arrive, you are 10 minutes from historic downtown, which offers unique galleries, shops, uh, winery tasting rooms, great restaurants. So lots of things to do right downtown. We have the Texrail, which connects the DFW airport. It's our commuter train. And it's only five minutes to downtown by the train. Once you get down there, we also have the Hotel Vin, which is a brand new hotel. It's a Marriott property. We'll be opening later this summer. Uh, it's an ambassador, an autographed, associate, autographed collection hotel. So we're really excited about it. It'll be right next to the train station and within walking distance to everything that Grapevine has to offer. We also have 20 hotels right here all 10 minutes from the airport and many of them offering complimentary airport transportation. Once you get to Grapevine, we also have a compliment or a, we have the Grapevine Visitor Shuttle, which is just $5 all day long on and off pass. And that'll take you to attractions all around town. So it's very easy to get around once you arrive here. I also like to just point out that Grapevine is centrally located right between Dallas and Fort Worth. So it's very easy to experience the entire area. I mentioned we have 20 hotels here in Grapevine. I'm not gonna point them all out, but I will point out the Gaylord Texan Resort just cause it's very Texan. And that's what we're highlighting on this tour. The Gaylord Texan Resort has 1,811 rooms. It's uh, obviously very large property and it's very Texan. You'll see a replica of the Alamo, the Riverwalk, Palo Duro Canyon, train stations, um, all that really is uh, symbolizes Texas. There's 10 restaurants on site, a nightclub, three, three pools, a spa. So it is a really a unique location and it sits right on beautiful Lake Grapevine. Historic downtown, as I mentioned, is really the heart of Grapevine. This is the area, as I mentioned earlier, it has about 80 different shops, restaurants, galleries. And when we talk about galleries, we're also talking about live artisans. So you can actually see a blacksmith working. You can see a bronze sculptor. You can watch glass blowing. You can see artists from oil painting to water, uh, water painting or water paint. Uh, so all sorts of different art taking place right here in Grapevine. And you can even experience on your own. You can do your own lessons. So it's a lot of fun to take in. Uh, the winery tasting rooms, of course, that's a fun thing to explore when you're down there. Uh, I also have to point out that bottom picture. So we have our own glockenspiel, which is also a clock tower, if you're not familiar with that. But it's the would-be train robbers. So those two gentlemen or cowboys that you see. So they come out to every two hours between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. or 20 hundred. And they, uh, they argue over who's gonna rob the train, how they're gonna divide the money, and it ends in a good old fashioned Texas shootout. So that's something you can only see in downtown Grapevine. We're also about to get this summer, we will open our new observation tower which will offer 360 views that'll include Lake Grapevine, downtown Dallas, and downtown Fort Worth. Another item that you can, or attraction you can hop on in historic downtown Grapevine is our Grapevine Vintage Railroad. This historic train will take you over to the Fort Worth Stockyards, which I will talk about here in just a little bit. I mentioned the Urban Wine Trail, and uh, Grapevine is actually a really big hub for the wine trail here. We're pretty, uh, definitely an important destination when it comes to the wine in Texas. As you can see, we have over 350 wineries in Texas, and we are the fifth largest producer of wine in the United States. 
So there's lots of great wineries to explore. They all have a very different personality. We do wine trails throughout the year, different fun festivals and events. Every September, we have the largest wine festival here called Great Fest. Part of that festival, we always uh, we always highlight a different international destination. And two years ago, it was Australian wines. So we've had some really good connections with Australia through Great Fest and the wineries here in Grapevine. We also have com a company called Grapevine Wine Tours, where they can set everything up for you, including a guide, transportation, and take you around to the different wineries and include lunch or dinner, depending on which tour you're doing. Shopping is always a favorite activity when you're traveling internationally. And here at Grapevine Mills, we have tax-free shopping. So there's great shops, really, uh, really popular shops, such as uh, the Kate Spade, Michael Kors, Nike Factory Outlet. A lot of great shops there where you can get tax-free or get your taxes back after you shop. We also have family attractions, Sea Life Aquarium, Legoland Discovery Center, Peppa Pig, World of Play, all sorts of fun things that you can do right there at Grapevine Mills. Now, with the Cowboys, Indians, and all that jazz itinerary, you'll get to experience all of those things that I mentioned. But of course, you want to experience that cowboy way of life. So we are going to be sure and include Fort Worth, which is just 25 minutes from Grapevine. You'll get over to the Fort Worth Stockyards, which is, you'll see cowboys on horseback going up and down the brick-lined roads. You'll see a live cattle drive. You'll get to experience a rodeo, uh, go into saloons, do some Western wear shopping, and even in your night at Billy Bob's, the world's largest honky-tonk. And we have to talk about ranches because, of course, Texas is famous for ranches here. So we'll make sure you get the opportunity to visit a, an actual working ranch where you can do your own cattle drive or go skeet shooting, do some things like that. Uh, here in Grapevine, we're actually home to Historic Nash Farm, which is the oldest continuously working farm in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. As a matter of fact, just last week, we were harvesting wheat there. So not me, but we did have some workers over there doing that. And we just had three lambs, baby lambs that were born just a few weeks ago. So uh, it's, a, it's a fun place to get to explore and see what life was like on the farm or the ranch in the 1800s. And uh, South Fork Ranch, which you all may be familiar with, it's, it was made famous because of the TV show Dallas. And uh, we'll make sure you get a chance to explore South Fork Ranch before heading on up north to Oklahoma. Thank you, Heather. Uh, it's pretty miserable in Auckland today, so a day at a winery sounds sounds very good right about now. Um, and as Heather said, next up we have Oklahoma. Um, a fun fact, Oklahoma shares, um, Oklahoma's share of Route 66 is the largest of any state and links to some of the Mother Road's iconic highlights and interesting old towns. So to start, I'm going to play a short video for you and then we will be uh, joined again by Todd. So let me just pull up that video. Prairies and mountains and hills made of sand meet skies full of stars and lakes we call grand. This is a land of wide open wonder where fun rolls rampant in the city of thunder. There's a highway that calls while you get your kicks and stops full of music to round out your trip. Whatever you want on your next vacation, whether it's adventure you seek or just relaxation, from border to border you'll see something new with 10 million acres of forest to view where shoreline can stretch almost to the horizon and the land holds plenty of thrills and surprises. If you're not here, then you're definitely not. And you're missing out, missing out on a lot. So visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play. and Todd will take it from here and tell you all about Oklahoma.
Are you there, Todd? Okay, give us a second. <laughs> Okay, um, sounds like it looks like Todd might be having a little bit of um, an issue rejoining. I can see he's come back in as a presenter. So just give us a minute um, while he's joining. I might quickly find another video from from Travel OK to to watch. So just give me give me a sec. Bailey, it shows I'm back in. Yes, great. Welcome back. Sorry. <laughs> a little technical difficulties here on the prairie. <laughs> well, okay, glad. I'll, I'll hand it over so to glad. you. <laughs> so glad to have everybody joining us. Um, again, uh, so excited to be able to share uh, Oklahoma with Texas, Louisiana to give a really great authentic experience of what the United States has to offer. Um, and one of the things that we're excited about to share is that actual experience. Um, we know in Oklahoma that we're not necessarily the first state you may visit, but we hopefully are one that you would want to come back to um, and see. And we'll go through some of the reasons why that is. Um, we, we call ourselves Land and No Boundaries. Uh, it, Oklahoma has a very rich heritage, especially in Native American culture. Uh, Oklahoma is a Choctaw, tr which is one of the tribal nations in the United States. It's a Choctaw word that actually means red people. So the ties that you're going to see with American Indian culture and even the development will be something that hopefully, hopefully will bring all of these things to your mind. Um, with that, we have tons of attractions, over 800 museums in the state itself. And the uh, abilities to be able to share and bring those stories to life. So what makes some of the things about Oklahoma very unique is we have the most diverse ecology of all the 50 states, mile for mile. Oh, some can't hear anything. Are people not hearing me? Okay. Um, mile for mile that we're the most diverse state in the union we have 12 eco regions um, ranging everything which you saw in the video from the second largest desert in north america which is known as little sahara um, to tall grass prairie um, where you'll see in different areas to a couple of specific different areas of the state you see free roaming bison um, one in particular in uh, the southwest region of the state is the wichita mountains wildlife refuge which was the very first wildlife refuge set up by the federal government and has free roaming bison, longhorns, prairie dogs, elk, um, so similar to a lot of the things you'll see in the great national parks of Yellowstone. Um, but the difference here is uh, the, the abilities for all of things going on. You're not crowded. You're not going to be put into um, a train of cars to go through here. It's a, it's a free drive through. Um, but sometimes, depending on the time of day, you may be the only vehicle in the entire park. So those are the things that open those availabilities to you. On the same line of that, uh, we have 35 state parks throughout Oklahoma. Uh, five of those have lodges. Most all of them have ca cabin abilities as well. So if you want to kind of have a break from an urban stay and have some uh, opportunities to be out in nature, um, most of them are set along lakes, uh, much like the one that you see um, in the image there. And uh, another little Quirky fact is we're on the central flyway. So birding is a huge part uh, twice a year uh, coming through the state as well. So kind of blending in and making transition to from the Texas cowboy, it bleeds into Oklahoma as well. And that true cowboy way of life is very alive and active here. Um, music, especially a lot of the current, uh, the, the mega stars, if, if you will, uh, such as Garth Brooks, Reba McIntyre, Carrie Underwood, Toby Keith, Vince Gill, 
um, Ronnie Dunn from Brooks and Dunn, all are Oklahomans. And so even though they've moved out of the state and done and gone into their ways, there's so many opportunities to catch that type of live music throughout Oklahoma. And then also bleeding into um, another 11 genres of music that you can enjoy here as well that uh, is based here. Red Dirt Music was started in Stillwater, Oklahoma, which is just north of our capital city of Oklahoma City um, at the farmhouse. And they still have availability to go out and visit there as well. Ranching opportunities, again, things to stop and see. And rodeo way of life is a huge thing throughout Oklahoma. Uh, the International Finals Rodeo is hosted in Oklahoma City in January every year. But during the spring and summer, uh, there's ranch rodeos throughout the state and PRCA rodeos, bull ridings, um, a lot of those things and opportunities for you to visit. Direct your attention quickly to the center picture. And just outside of downtown Oklahoma City is known as Stockyard City. And it's its own district, its own actual working city. And it is, they have an auction every Monday and Tuesday. They average anywhere from 80,000 to 100,000 head of cattle through there. You're welcome to go walk the catwalks, uh, the, the bridges above the pins, and go into the auction arena and observe the auctioning happening. Um, and then everything around in that area supports a working cowboy. So you will see cowboys on horseback. You will see them on ATVs rounding up cattle. You will see uh, or have opportunities to go in and do shopping in that area. There's saddle makers, there's boot makers, there's spur makers, all of that in that one district. So that's an example of things you can enjoy there as well. Transitioning now into American Indian side, Oklahoma has 39 tribes headquartered in the state. So that is more than anywhere in the nation uh, of, uh, in the U.S., which means there's 41 working governments at any one time in Oklahoma. So those cross over and different which regions you're into the state depends on what tribal jurisdictions you're in. We do not have reservations, so it's a totally assimilated state. But with that, there's lots of cultural centers. There will be opening a brand new, it's called the First Americans Museum in Oklahoma City um, next spring. And it will be kind of a starting point to learn about the different tribes because only two of the 39 that are headquartered here are native to the state of Oklahoma. All the others were forced, forcibly moved into Oklahoma. You may have heard the term Trail of Tears, uh, which refers specifically to the five tribes. And they really were rounded up like cattle and put into stockades and made to walk from their homelands which most of those tribes are from the southeastern part of the state, all the way from the Carolinas, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, um, and moved into Oklahoma and were given areas of land to live on, which was then taken away again and then settled again. So from that, you have a very resilient people and what they are as well. But just like the rodeo seasons in the spring and fall or summer, spring and summer, there's powwows and celebra celebrations all throughout the spring, summer, fall, and even into early winter um, that you can go and enjoy. Also comes with that are different celebrations, art markets, uh, the celebration of music and food, definitely, um, that you can experience. Even the game of stickball and hand stick and things like that that you'll get to participate in as an individual. Route 66, as Bailey had mentioned. Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the northeast part of the state, is known as the capital of Route 66. Route 66 is the most famous road in all of the world, and we have just over four, about 450 miles of it that run through the state of Oklahoma, and we've identified around 100 attractions of things to see and do along that highway. Quirky roadside stops, unique attractions, beautiful theaters, and probably the most uh, encouraging and, and interesting thing of all, it would definitely be the people. And that's kind of what I'm gonna wrap up on and the diversity of Oklahoma. And one of the things that we always hear, especially from our international visitors, is they made friends and they still keep in contact with them. And we are a true melting pot of all cultures because of the way the state of Oklahoma was settled. We were the 46th state to enter the union um, we were settled by land runs and land lotteries, and you have to come to Oklahoma to figure out what the hell that means. But we have a lot of multicultural diversity within the state. Many of those are communities that are, we have a German community, we have an Italian community, we have a Czech community, we have a Vietnamese community. We, and so there's lots of pockets of the diversity all throughout Oklahoma. 
But the one thing if we want to tell you more than anything is you're welcome in Oklahoma. You will make friends in Oklahoma and you will create experiences that you want to come back and relive. Thank you all. Thank you, Todd. That was that was really great. And when I met you earlier this year, I was really surprised to learn um, about all of the German um, history in Oklahoma. So, so thank you very much for covering that again. And it's I guess it's such a small snapshot of a really diverse state. So um, look forward to hearing from you more about you know, more about Oklahoma from you at some other point. And uh, now we're going to move over to Louisiana with Maria, um, a state tied together by a deep, unshakable appreciation for the good things in life, food and music. And I'm going to start with two videos, one from Shreveport and one from Alexandria, and then we'll move on to Oklahoma. So let me pull those videos up for you now. It's a great time to see it, bet it, taste it in Shreveport Bossier, Louisiana's other side. There's so much to do. Let's go. See it. Concerts, festivals, shopping galore, museums, and outdoor adventure. Bet it. Six Vegas-style casinos with all your favorite games and a thrilling racetrack. Taste it. Great places to grab a bite or linger longer and savor the flavor. Plan your adventure at ShreveportBossier.com. Yes. Are you ready to go now? Yes. Awesome. Perfect. So I'll hand it over to you and you can tell us all about Louisiana. Okay. Thank you. You can turn your video back on if you like as well. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Well, with those videos, we are um, into Louisiana, Bayou Country. Um, another gateway into Louisiana from the north, four hours from Durant, Oklahoma. And three hours from Dallas Fort Worth Airport to the east is Shreveport, Bossier City. And this area has grown a lot. There are five riverboat casinos, cultural attractions, 55 festivals throughout the year, 200 restaurants and more and growing. Um, the most of the attractions that we are including in the itinerary that we're going to highlight today. Um, starting with the American Rose Center with 118 acres uh, dedicated to roses with two uh, bloom seasons in April and October. The Chimp Haven, where the largest chimp sanctuary in the world is located in the Shreveport area. It rehabilitates rescued chimpanzees and allows visitors to observe them in their natural habitat. The Shreveport Municipal Auditorium, this is where you start getting into the music of Louisiana, built in the 1920s. This iconic venue is the home of the historic Louisiana Hayride radio and television program, where Elvis Presley gave his first live performance. Um, continue on with the Native American history, the Louisiana State Exhibit Museum houses a huge collection and tells the story of the early settlements in Northwest Louisiana. For art lovers, the Norton Art Gallery, housing thousands of American and European sculptures, paintings, artifacts, and decorative art spanning four centuries. Also, the Southern University Museum of Art, where you can experience the culture of African and African American life through art, and listen to stories of the Black life in Shreveport through art and culture. Of course, Shreveport has plenty of dining options, Herbie Kay's is one of Shreveport's longest running restaurants where you can enjoy fresh Louisiana seafood. Orlando's Cafe with Creole and Southern food being served daily and Strong's Eat Shop, which is one of the most acclaimed diners in the South. Strong's Eat Shop is famous for ice box pies, which you must grab one of your favorite flavor 
um, and you make your way to Alexandria Pineville, uh, which is known as uh, Central Louisiana and is considered the crossroads of Louisiana's many cultures. Whether you enjoy history, um, we have Civil War and World War II history, the arts, the great outdoors, or have an interest in our um, agricultural heritage. Think timber, sugarcane, cotton, and crawfish in this area. Central Louisiana has something for uh, everyone. And it's a, an ideal stop on your drive from Shreveport to Louisiana, to New Orleans. Uh, for Civil War uh, history, you can hide through Forts Randolph and Bolo along the Red River and um, take a glimpse to the plantation life along the bayous. For World War II, the Military Museum and the Louisiana Maneuvers Museum, um, these were led by Generals Eisenhower and Patton and are considered true game changers in military history and are credited with changing the outcome of World War II. From there, you can walk to the historic Hotel Bentley, enjoy a cocktail before heading down to one of the delicious restaurants where you can enjoy Southern food. For art lovers, you will find Southern artists at the Alexandria Museum of Art, as well as the River Oaks Art Center with 30, uh, uh, more than 30 artists in residence, an incredible art gallery and gift shop as well. Great food in this area from fine dining to a food truck park with plenty of options in between. And of course, the great outdoors, the Kisachi National Forest, offering hiking, biking, paddling, and also a horseback riding trail. Bailey, you want to play the New Orleans video? Yeah, perfect. Um, before I do that, I'm interested to know, what's an icebox pie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. It is, uh, um, uh, should I send you guys a picture of it? <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe you can do that at the end when, when I'm asking the, the trivia let, question. Let me, let me Google it, and Erica maybe can help with this as well. She's joining us today, okay. and she'll tell you a story about the icebox perfect. I'm, pie. I'm, I, I, <laughs> I bet it's not anything to do with what I have um, in my head. Well, it's, it's not uh, for your diet, but. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm, I'll, I'll wait to see a picture. Um, I'll play this, this video, the New Orleans um, video now. If you could turn on your video, that would be, that would be awesome. So we can um, see you as you're going through um, your part of the presentation. Oh, so I will know what, yeah, that's awesome. So I'm going to play your video now. Here we go. And with that video, um, you will find yourself in a different town altogether um, that offers jazz seven days of the week. The historic French Quarter will make you feel you are in a small colonial town and you will have so many activity options when you are in the city. Best known for Carnival or Mardi Gras and the city's nightlife. And New Orleans is also a family friendly town and very easy to get around. It's one of the most appealing perks of New Orleans. In this map, you can see this is our historic downtown area where you can go from the historic Treme neighborhood, the French Quarter, which is said to be haunted, is called very romantic neighborhood to a more hip, um, and Bohemian Marini Bywater, or to the other side, a more um, urban living, modern, with great famous restaurants um, on the opposite side within walking steps from one another. Um, so 
with this itinerary that we are showcasing um, at Oklahoma and Grapevine, if you are still hungry after eating your way through Shreveport and Alexandria, we are suggesting a small bite at one of the great restaurants, uh, great pubs in the city, and a jazz session in the French Quarter to start your stay in New Orleans with uh, an, a classic New Orleans experience. One of the acclaimed music venues in the heart of the city is Preservation Hall, a very casual, cash at the door, um, but you can pay in advance uh, a higher a higher price. No food or drinks are allowed inside, although you can wait uh, in the line with a, a go cup. Strictly music, a jazz session that lasts approximately 45 to 50 minutes. After that, you can continue to make your way down Bourbon Street and visit other jazz venues, the uh, Music Legends Park, the uh, um, Fritzel's European Jazz Bar, the Maison Bourbon, all right on Bourbon Street. Or you can visit any other music venue. Um, that you will find music for all the tastes, R&B, soul, country, brass band, and blues as well. So the best thing about uh, being in New Orleans in this small geographic footprint is that it allows you to be flexible with your with their itinerary, whether it is this itinerary, any itinerary that you guys are selling to your customers, and and you can do it at your own pace. Um, so the best way to know New Orleans is um, uh, that the attractions are so easy to access, and one of the easiest ways to enjoy is with the hop on hop off tour, and the options that that offers. It, the tour itself takes two hours to do a loop, but you can make different stops that will allow you to get to the National World War II Museum. Really, truly an impressive project that must be a, a must um, do in every visit. Or visit Mardi Gras World, where you can see the artists working on um, the floats for the following year festival. Or visit the shops on Magazine Street. Or make a stop at the Outlet Collection at Riverwalk and take advantage of our um, tax-free shopping program, which is available throughout the state. Um, so easy and flexible, you can start your day uh, with a light breakfast at the iconic Cafe Du Monde, which is open uh, 24 hours, uh, and join a cooking demonstration where you learn about Creole and Cajun food, then take a walk to the French Quarter, uh, a walking tour through the French Quarter, visit the state museums in the heart of the French Quarter at Jackson Square, um, as well as the cathedral, or you can just stroll down the French market and visit the Jazz Museum in the end. Um, we have options for live music, uh, for dancing, great options for dinner and music if you choose to. The river boats are an option for that, um, listening to some Dixie jazz while on the river relaxing, but also iconic restaurants like uh, Arno's and the Jazz Bistro and the Palm Court Jazz Cafe that offer you the option of enjoying music while you are um, dining at the same time. From there in the evening, your second evening, you can head on to Frenchland Street and experience a whole nother um, street of music venues available, some offering R&B, some offering jazz concerts, swing jazz lessons, dance lessons, um, even uh, hip hop sometimes, depending on the artist that is on the calendar. Um, so you, another way is to add a brunch, of course. Um, um, one of the delicious, uh, uh, amazing restaurants that we have for a delicious brunch. Stroll down Royal Street and visit uh, the historic collection or the antique shops. Or you can choose to take the streetcar and visit the Garden District, the beautiful homes and shops and the restaurants on Magazine before heading to the airport on your last day. So many options and you haven't even left the French Quarter downtown area. So I hope this offers some inspiration. Uh, we are here to answer questions and help you plan uh, your future trips. So thank you. And while you were talking, I Googled um, the icebox pie. A, what we would call a, a cheesecake. Are they always lemon or are they different flavours? Oh, I've lost you. Do you want to turn, Maria? We've lost your sound. Can you turn Can you turn the button back on? Yeah, so no, you can buy the different flavours. Can you hear me now? Yes. Strawberry, chocolate, butterscotch and many other options. Banana, 
So grab it, put it in the car. It's a three hour ride from Alexandria to New Orleans. <laughs> And you can enjoy dessert it as sounds, you uh, travel through. It sounds good. I've put a um, found a, a Betty Crocker classic Betty Crocker recipe. So I shared <laughs> I shared that down there. And I just want to ask you again, so you can tell everyone uh, some serious music equipment behind you. Um, is that, that do you want to tell us? Oh a little bit yes! About Don't I look like I am in a production <laughs> studio? This is. <laughs> So this is my husband's and my son's. My husband is a piano player, jazz. He plays at Bourbon Street at uh, one of the, a couple of the uh, bars on Bourbon. My son is a jazz um, bass player, but also produces his own music and, and uh, experimenting a little bit more on the rock. I love alternative it. Well, options out there. So. Um, well, the next webinar that we do, we'll have to bring them on and they can kind of, they can do the intro for us. Give you a concert. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much. That was, that was really great. And yeah. hopefully we've given all of um, our participants or our attendees today um, some ideas for a really unique itinerary for their clients. And before we go today, I'm going to ask the trivia questions and i'll also welcome all of our presenters back on if you guys want to turn your your video and your microphones on and i'll get all of our attendees to answer uh, these trivia questions so the first one is where does texas rank as a wine producing state is it first third fifth or tenth uh, the second question for oklahoma is how many american indian nations have tribal headquarters in oklahoma 12, 25, 32, or 39? And then the third question is how many, uh, what types of music can you find in New Orleans on any day of the week? Jazz, R&B, brass, and all of the above. So I'll just give you a little bit more time to, to answer those questions and hopefully get Todd back on. There we go, welcome back. I don't have your, I don't think that we can hear you yet though, Todd. There we go. Now, okay. Perfect. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and answer those que uh, those survey questions. And because all of our presenters are still here, if you have any questions, can you go ahead and type those in the box? Um, pretty amazing opportunity to ask any burning questions that you've had, any questions that you get asked regularly from your clients anything that you'd like um, you can go ahead and ask those and we will we will uh, endeavor to answer your questions and if not we can follow up um, on email but does anybody have any questions today well Erica is telling us that Strawn's Eat Shop in Shreveport has the best icebox pies so that'll <laughs> definitely definitely go on the the itinerary I think so I see a question from Sharon Yes. about our borders being open the borders between our three states are all open um and we're our region of the u.s is much further ahead of the rest of the country um as far as things that are open um oklahoma has had i mean like our hair salons and uh limited restaurant availability has been open for a month Two weeks ago, our restaurants started um, inside dining, and or three weeks ago, and last week our bars opened. So, mm -hmm. and in fact, next week I just uh, <laughs> got an. I know, but we did get home <laughs> delivery out of this. <laughs> um, but I did just see that uh, June fifth, we have an amusement park, a Six Flags Park, in uh, just in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. and they've announced that they will be opening June fifth. So our attractions and things like that, a lot of those are open and available for you to visit already. Perfect. Yeah. As I say, Texas, I think I saw rodeos are now open. Uh, yeah. The water parks will be opening later this week. So yes. Thank and you. of course, as we mentioned, the wineries opened last weekend. So we were Good. very excited. <laughs> we had as far New Orleans. Sorry, go, go Sorry, as far as New Orleans, we are um, still uh, going through the phase one of the reopening. So in the downtown area, the restaurants are at 25% capacity right now, outdoor seating available and all that, mainly pickup um, delivery. So all at slightly different stages at the moment. But Yes. Mm -hmm. 
we will we will get there. Um, so we have another question from Lisa. What is the best um, time? What is the best weather time of year to to travel to this region? When is the best time? Depends on if you like heat or not. <laughs> <laughs> It depends on what you want, you know, yeah. if you're interested in, yeah. in coming at Mardi Gras time, which is crazy, fun, party, or do you want to just stay completely away from that, then, you know, it, it's, it just depends. But we have activities, I'm sure all of the, you know, all of the states are celebrating our cultures throughout the year. Yeah. Um, Weather-wise, it's a whole nother <laughs> story uh, for Louisiana, especially in New Orleans in the South. Um, the weather doesn't change much over here, and it stays pretty uh, um, uh, temperate, you know, warm. Um, so our cold weather may be January, four days of that month, and that's it. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So pretty much any time of the year is, is good to travel to, to these three states. Let me see. I had best time to visit for a top rodeo. Um, Spring, goodness. summer. Yeah, as I said, really for rodeos, um, any weekend, so typically Saturdays and Sundays, we do have big rodeos in San Antonio, Houston. Uh, those, gosh, I'm trying to remember when they typically go on, I think spring or fall, but really you can see excellent bull riding, um, all sorts of barrel racing, all sorts of great rodeos every Friday and Saturday night here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So pretty much being great fine for the weekend. So we can yeah. go to a rodeo, go to the, the wineries and then um, loop through. So we've got time for two more questions. Um, one is if you wanted to stay, this is for New Orleans, if you wanted to stay near enough to the music and food in New Orleans but wanted to stay far away so husband doesn't spend all his time in Bourbon Street. <laughs> where, where, that's very specific. Where would you, where would you recommend? Okay, we, I don't know. I'm not responsible for it. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, the French Quarter is just a part of, of the options, one of the options for nightlife. You can go to Magazine Street, um, Chop, Chapatulas, which is it, it named after one of the Indian tribes, um, street with some jazz bars. You can go uptown to Oak, Oak Street and uh, Maple Leaf Bar. There are so many options. You don't have to um, stay on Bourbon. But if it is your first time coming to New Orleans, you must visit Bourbon Street. <laughs> At least once. I, I agree. Um, yeah. So we, we have two more questions, actually. I'll, first one I'll go, um, the gateway to Texas uh, from New Zealand is Houston. So how long does it take to drive from Houston to, to Grapevine, Heather? Uh, actually, only four hours. So it's not a, it's a very easy drive, Highway 45. So yes, it's very easy. Or there are also direct flights from Houston to DFW that are just an hour. So Awesome. And then the final question is the um, Cowboys, Indians and all that jazz itinerary available um, to book. So we will be working with wholesalers in New Zealand to, to, to make this happen. But also at the moment, it is available through ATI. Is that correct? Correct. Great. Well, thank you all um, for joining us today. It was really amazing. This is our longest, our longest webinar, and I'm so glad that everybody's. Um, we've had so many people stay on. So, really engaging, interesting information for our market. Um, some awesome questions as we've moved through today. So, thank you for everyone for joining as well. So, thank you, thank you very much, and um, I'll speak thank to you. you again soon. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Bye.